Hey there, I've got an unboxing of comic books to go through. Uh, I guess it's more like an unenveloping. Uh, but this is an order of Near Mint Comics. Uh, the condition's going to be a mystery. So let's open this up and see what I got. All right, as we head toward the end of this year, you know, one of the things that I've been talking about is just uh, going through your process of analyzing what you're buying, what you're selling, what you're collecting, and looking at things a little bit differently. Uh, so what I've been doing is uh, using my analysis through Google Sheets, uh, tracking orders, tracking grades, uh, tracking sellers, and trying to figure out uh, the best opportunities to buy comic books, and then looking at that information and taking, uh, you know, tra gathering insights, uh, looking at insightful information from your personal collection to then make decisions whether or not you'd like to sell, uh, maybe press or fix or upgrade or um, uh, send off to CGC or CBCS for grading. Uh, so. To keep going with that data, um, I need more books, I need more things to screen, more things to uh, to look at and analyze and data enter. And so I have another uh, order here of comics. This is from Mile High Comics. I'm going to get this package uh, opened, um, get the comic books out, and then we'll take a look and see what's inside. Um, this is an order that I placed uh, mid-December 2021 and all the books were listed as near mint. And so the condition is a mystery and we're gonna open this up and take a look and see uh, how the books turned out. So let's get to the unboxing. Okay, so this is the order from Mile High that I received um, about a week ago, roughly. Um, ordered mid-December, I'd been buying a lot from them. Um, and this is how the shipment arrives. Uh, I always choose FedEx when I'm checking out. You have the option. I think it defaults to uh, USPS, but there's no additional charge once you get beyond their free shipping tier. Um, and I always choose FedEx. I prefer it. I love the tracking. Um, always delivered to my doorstep uh, in this nice padded envelope with no issues. So let me get this open. And this is typically how the order is received in uh, this sort of Uline mailer. It always comes uh, undamaged. Again, well packaged from Mile High along with uh, FedEx. And let's get this. They always send sort of these dividers as additional protection around the bubble wrap. And I'm trying to figure out how to get this tape off. I don't like to, yeah, there we go. I was gonna say, I'm <clears throat> trying not to dig into the side with my fingers. Just trying to be super careful here to not uh, not grab any of the comics around the spine. It's even just a fingernail jabbing into the side could put a dent in these hopefully very valuable books. All right, so the last piece, put all these books in this plastic bag, like a little shopping bag. And I'm gonna slide the packing slip out so I can play along at home. So this was a this was a ten book order from Mile High, and I don't plan on screening all of these books uh, one at a time. Uh, maybe for some of them that are a bit more interesting to us, we will certainly take them out of the bag and board and take a look. But uh, yeah, these will be in no particular order, just how they are in the stack. So let's get to it. Uh, don't look over there and sneak to see the next one. We'll do these one at a time. All right, so the first book is Thrawn number six. 
So this is issue six of six in the, the Thrawn Marvel series. And uh, we're all hoping Thrawn makes his live action debut in the Ahsoka series on Disney+. Plus. And uh, this is just a great cover here with Darth Vader and the Emperor behind Thrawn. And really, there aren't that many comics with Thrawn in it. And uh, looking at his first solo series... I'm trying to get all six issues. I have issue one graded in a 9.8. Um, I think I have either issue two or four, and, and now I have issue six. So I'm not going to, like I said, not going to take all of these out of the bag and board, just kind of show you what I got, and then we'll look at the details of the order in terms of what I spent and uh, why I bought these. The next book, this kind of popped up, um, and I believe they have several copies of this. Uh, this is Man Thing number one, uh, a very very nice uh, issue one of the Bronze Age. Uh, really really um, Bob Wyasek uh, cover here in 1979. Uh, just not a not a huge Man Thing collector, but definitely a collector of near mint uh, Bronze Age Marvel. Um, this at first glance looks to be really really great. In, uh, in, of course, the bag and board, and uh, I'll eventually take it out and grade it. But uh, this was one that just kind of came up uh, as I was looking at some numbers and looking at the Mile High Comics uh, new releases. So you can do this on your own if you go to their uh, premium new in stock, and I think they update it five times a week. And a lot of times I'll just be going through the list and uh, looking at the years of the series, and whenever I see like 1970s, 1980s, I'll click into it. And uh, I really thought that uh, Man Thing number one, again, using their 60% off code um, that's still going on, was a good deal. All right, X Men 166. This is a book that I continue to pick up. Um, this is the first uh, Lockheed. Um, and I'm always speculating, uh, one of the X-Men I'm, I'm speculating pretty hard on is, is Kitty Pride. Uh, I feel like she's going to be part of the younger generation of MCU heroes going forward. And uh, I feel like you can't have Kitty Pride without Lockheed in the MCU. Um, they're going to put their own spin on these characters. They're going to look at uh, things differently than Fox did. And one way to kind of separate her is... Um, go ahead and give her um, the Lockheed Companion. So uh, I have a few of these. I'm always speculating on this. Uh, I do see a few hairline spine ticks on this one, uh, but this looks to be in good shape too. Um, I love that they, they sent this in a MyLite and a fullback. Um, so that's cool too. I um, really appreciate that. So this is X-Men 166. Some of these books too, you can go ahead and check. Um, they... Uh, they're probably some of some of these copies are still in stock if you wanted to grab uh, some of these to match what I got. Um, here's one Web of Spider Man 32. Um, I have a couple copies of this as well, but what I noticed when I got mine, uh, the one that I had had from my childhood, had outlines all over this cover. I traced the entire cover uh, when I was young. And so there was that permanent indentation all across the cover, and I'm not going to take a steel ball to that whole thing and smooth it out, and I wanted to get some replacement copies. Uh, one of my favorite uh, Spider-Man covers of this era uh, of the mid to late 80s, and uh, just a great Mike Zek cover of Spider-Man. Uh, and uh, this is around the time of the Craven's Last Hunt and, and so on. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to have it to see if I could get it in a 9.8. Uh, I'd love to have this slabbed. Um, and this one looks like it's suffering from a little bit of a spine curl. Uh, there is a spine tick there, so may not be the 9.8 copy, but still uh, in great shape, listed, in great shape uh, listed as near mint on mile high. So just a fantastic Spider-Man cover. All right, let's keep it going. We've got Amazing Spider-Man. 249. Uh, I have been picking this one up as well. Um, there's the big guy in the back, uh, Hobgoblin. This was uh, before I watched 
the last episode or two of Hawkeye and before I saw No Way Home. And so there was part of me that was thinking, Hobgoblin, Ned Leeds, Kingpin, maybe there's something there. Um, you know, whether this specific spec or gamble turned out, I don't know exactly. But uh, I still love this book. And let's see, I'm just taking a quick peek at it. Yeah, it, uh, it has, it's suffering from a little bit of a miswrap. And again, that happens. It doesn't detract from the, the grade. And there are a few hairline spine ticks there, but overall looks to be in good shape. Um, so there you got Amazing Spider-Man 249. Okay, now this book, um, this is my second copy of this. Um, this is Star Wars 71. This is the first full appearance of Bosque. Um, and then kind of cameos in, in a couple of other issues. But this is the first full. Um, this is um, probably my last little bit of speculation before the Book of Boba Fett begins on December 29th. Uh, and I I just feel like Bosk is going to be in there. I, I just have a feeling that there's going to be some reference or callback to him. Um, so uh, this one I got before, I believe uh, it was a 9-8 uh, maybe nine six with a press to, to really push it over the uh, over the top as a nine eight, but could be a nine eight on its own. Um, this looks to be another great copy from Mile High, so really glad I secured uh, an extra copy of uh, Star Wars seventy one before they're gone. All right, here's Punisher number one. Uh, I guess this is his first solo series. It depends if you count the limited series as first solo. This is first solo ongoing, you know, so if you're, I guess, a completionist, you're getting his first appearance, ASM 129 might be out of reach. You know, then you've got first limited series. This is first ongoing. Uh, this is another one that I used to carry around with me as a kid and uh, read it quite often. I didn't trace this one, but it looked... Uh, gently used and wanted to get another copy and uh, I love these first first issues first series and love the dynamics on this cover too um, of Punisher uh, sliding in with the giant bazooka cannon uh, to break up <laughs> whatever those guys are doing there uh, but yeah just uh, I think a really affordable high grade copy um, again I'm, I see a few spine ticks here and there so it may not be nine eight per se but the corners look really good um so another great uh, book in the ballpark of near mint and there's punisher number one all right a few more to go this is moon knight number 12 uh, i guess it's a minor key but again uh we don't know yet which characters from moon knight uh from this his first series in the early 80s are going to show up uh, in the series, it could be one and dones. It could be a character that uh, sticks around for the entire season. We don't know. This is the first appearance of Morpheus. Um, I'm trying to get as many of these Moon Knight books as I can before uh, the series pops uh, next year. Uh, this is from 1981. Um, this, I believe, is a Frank Miller cover. I think so. And uh, yeah, Moon Knight number 12, um, slightly miswrapped, but that's okay. Um, it's very straight up and down the spine. Um, this looks to be an, a great copy. Um, so I'm looking forward to opening that and, and screening that one. Now, occasionally from Mile High, you will get a book that is not <laughs> in a bag and board. So they sent X-Men 166 in that, that nice My Light and uh, backing board. Um, so no backing board on this one. And this is Star Wars Shadows of the Empire number one. So there's two Star Wars books that have been popping. And this is one, Shadows of the Empire number one. And the other is Tales of the Jedi number one. Um, so I've been trying to secure copies of those, um, getting two or three of each if possible, and then um, screening those and holding on to them. Uh, as we get some more Star Wars uh, news and rumors. So, uh, again, just kind of looking at things a little bit uh, closely here. This looks to be a really nice, clean copy. Um, I do worry 
when they're not in the uh, board there that maybe the corners get a little softer than you'd like to see but uh, this looks to be a great copy this is my first uh, shadows of the empire number one um, really great artwork too i mean the character likeness is fantastic here um so that that's uh hugh fleming from 1996 did the art on this so uh, just a great looking book uh, so whether you're specking on it or not, if you're a Star Wars fan, uh, this is a nice one to to uh, to add to your collection. All right, last book. Uh, this is a book that I, I keep ordering. I keep seeing um, kind of cheaply listed. So either uh, I'm overpaying or over uh, speculating, but uh, I don't know. I'm just going to keep picking it up. Um, this is Batman 436, uh, first Tim Drake, and... Uh, like I said, I, I keep finding this for under fair market value. Um, and uh, at first glance, looks pretty good. The only thing I'll notice, the staple is kind of resting at the top instead of on the side. Uh, so it pretty much cannot be pressed, or at least I can't press it. Um, I did this recently where I took a book that uh, had staples on top and didn't really realize what that meant until I put it through the press and the staple uh, actually dented the book, uh, mostly on the back cover, like the back cover and, and last page or two. Um, so that's something that I'm learning, but this is not about pressing, but anyway, I just wanted to point that out. So the, that's the 10 books. Um, so let's look at the order here. I don't think I'm gonna open these up, but let's get to the details of the order and you can kind of see the numbers that I was playing with and why. I targeted these 10 books from Mile High. All right, so here are the details uh, of the order. Uh, this was an order placed from Mile High Comics back on December 14th. And you can see the amount I paid. Again, I'm full transparency here. Um, I know that uh, I'm supposed to tell you I jumped in a dumpster behind Target and found all of these books just laying in there. Um, you know, I'm just super lucky and fortunate, or I've got friends on the internet sending me all these books for free. Um, but I actually pay for these myself, and uh, I I do my own sort of hunting online um, and use data like this to help me figure out which books to buy. Uh, so these are the prices I paid. Uh, I took advantage of the 60% off code um, to get some of the prices down. And uh, it, what I typically talk about when I'm ordering from Mile High Comics is uh, you're not really going to make your money back if the book is a 9.4, um, if you're trying to just flip and sell the book raw. Typically, the fair market value overall of the books that you're buying, even after the discount, um, are right around FMV. Um, now, again, FMV is reported by cover prices across all grades. Uh, and, uh, you know, look at the years for these books. Um, we're talking about uh, 70s and 80s. Uh, the Thrawn book is from 2018. But still, uh, these books typically are going to have um, some sort of damage on them when they're being sold on eBay, which is one of the biggest resources for uh, sites like Cover Price and Go Collect and even GPA for slabs. Now, looking at this order... Um, one thing I want to point out is this fair market value as reported by cover price. And uh, we'll just kind of look at the numbers here and compare them as I move to the right. So there's no uh, reported GPA CGC value in column V yet because we haven't entered any grades. So overall for this, uh, again, looking at column Z, um, the total cost in column N is the cost of all the books plus the eight dollars for insurance and then i take that eight dollars and divide it by the total number of books in the order so this is adding 80 cents to the cost of each book and then i summarize it one more time just to make sure my math is correct so the bottom of column z matching the bottom of column n here indicates that yes um, my math is correct so then after the total cost i look at the raw profit and that's column double A here. And this raw profit uh, is the total cost 
compared to the fair market value. All right, so one of the things that I noticed when I was going back and looking at my recording was I had incorrectly listed Man-Thing uh, with the year 1974. So the clip that you just saw had values in there from the 1974 issue. I corrected it to the 1979 issue of Man-Thing number one. So if there's confusion around Man-Things, then, you know, uh, we probably have other problems, but in terms of the comics. So the one from 1979 is the copy that I got. And I adjusted these numbers here uh, to make sure that I was pulling in the not only the right book, but the right values. So the raw profit for this order is still negative, negative $16 for the order. And as I've mentioned, Mile High is not my resource for books that I feel I can get really cheap and flip them right away. Um, it's really more around the, the mystery of the condition and the speculation that uh, you may end up getting uh, one of those near mint books in a high grade, which then it has more value. So it's, it's about obtaining potential value than current raw value in flipping. There's lots of other different resources to get books under, uh, under FMV and then turn around and flip them. And most of those have to do with moderns and new releases. But for uh, Mile High in this case, I'm really, really focused on column AB, which is the CGC profit. Um, and so that is uh, the total cost of the book plus the cost to send it to Florida to get it graded by CGC. Uh, and in that case, uh, we're looking at column AB. And if I sent all of these books uh, and they received a no grade, I am out $560 based on the cost of the books and the cost to uh, ship and, and all the fees to have these books graded. Now, obviously, um, I believe that these books are around 9.4. That's what my data tells me. And so I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. But I just wanted to point that out specifically. So um, this row 6139 for man thing number one, um, I had a cost of $28.80. And the cover price fair market value for this book is actually $11.29. Previously, I was pulling in the 1974 copy. So something to keep an eye on. Uh, I actually looked this book up in GPA and I couldn't find it. So I was quite surprised. So the the GPA values are really cover price and go collects averaged for this specific book. Um, it's a rare case where there's just no GPA data for some reason uh, on this specific book in particular. Um, so the, the GPA value is really kind of made up uh, based on the averages of the other two. And that's why I use multiple sources, because if I was just going with GPA, this book would have zero value, which uh, we know based on two other resources, it does have value. So these are um, the values being pulled in from cover price and go collect when it comes to the GPA CGC value and cover price for a market value is still accurate at $11.29. All right, so let's get to some of the fun. If I were to plug in my grade here, just going kind of from, from least valuable to, or, or at least, uh, yeah, least valuable in terms of cover price, fair market value. Um, let's look at that and go 9.4 for Moon Knight number 12. And in a 9.4, it's got $85. And as you'll notice here, the CGC profit column AB uh, will start to hopefully uh, go towards a positive value. And so that's what I'm banking on is that if on average these books do have a 9.4 CGC you know, estimate, I would say, then uh, what would that potential value be if I were to send a 9.4 into CGC for each of these books? And then that summarized value at the end of column AB is what I'm going for to determine whether or not I, you know, was successful with this order. So continuing on, let's plug these in. Uh, let's go back to that man thing number one. So in a 9.4, $71, again, a CGC profit of 14 for that particular book. Um, let's jump down to X-Men 166, and that has a $63 value and a 9.4. So, so far, you know, getting a little bit of a profit here of like $11, 14, 26, so not bad. Um, again, that's after grading fees, so that's a good thing. So let's keep going here. Uh, how about Amazing Spider-Man 249 in a 9.4 for 
48 dollars uh looks like batman 436 57 dollars star wars 71 74 and i skipped web of spider-man 32 let's plug that in 98 in a 94 uh so that's great value there almost a 40 dollar uh profit punisher number one in a 94 85 dollars and if you're just following column AB, you'll see that's almost $28 ahead. And now I'm finally positive here at the bottom of the CGC profit column at $20.75. So now these two books, uh, Shadows of the Empire, 9.4 is 88, and Thrawn 6 at 33. And that one is low because it's a modern, so um, you're typically expecting to see that book in a higher grade. So overall, if these books hit at the average of 9.4, which near mint for me uh, from mile high is just a touch under 9.4. Uh, I think it's like 9.338, something like that. So rounding up or, or just being generous, it, you are roughly on average getting a 9.4 uh, graded book as I screen them uh, coming from mile high. And that's perfectly fine. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm what you see on the screen is the whole purpose of buying the books that I do. Uh, so again, if I'm to turn all of these over into graded copies, I stand to profit uh, $141.75 if I were to turn around and sell those books graded. Um, or you can look at it as just adding more value to your personal collection rather than just buying random books and hoping that they hit. So that's the difference of what I'm doing versus what speculators are doing. Speculators are buying uh, basically an unknown book and turning around and talking about it in hopes to inflate the value of it by talking excessively about the book. And what I'm trying to do is I'm allowing a book to rise in value. So I'm letting the speculator community and the collecting community go ahead and add additional value to the books. And once the value has been added... I want to go and see where it makes sense to purchase these books now that, you know, I would say that the, the books are warm and they're starting to heat up. Um, some of these books um, have no heat at all. They're just minor keys that I've, I'm finding value in. Um, now, the the last bit of sort of fun that I like to do is I like to flip all of these to 9.8s. Now, are all these books going to hit a 9.8? Absolutely not. It's never happened. Um, the percentage chance for a 9.8 from mile high is roughly 20%. So out of 10 books, it's probably likely I would get one or two 9.8s out of here, which as we turn these grades to 9.4 to 9.8, you'll see uh, there's a lot of upside there. So it's worth the risk, it's worth the gamble. Even if a couple of these books hit and the rest stay around that 9.4, it was still a worthwhile purchase in my opinion. So let's just flip these for fun, and I won't do them in any particular order. We'll just kind of go down. You can see Batman turns into almost a $300 book. Uh, Man-Thing, the 1979 copy, is $167. Uh, left on the cutting room floor is when I had it uh, attached to the 1974 version, which is a $2,000.98. That's not what I bought, uh, but still $167 uh, with a $110 profit potential. Potential if it is a 9.8. Uh, still a good buy, in my opinion. Moon Knight 12 jumps to 250. Punisher 1 goes over 300. Amazing Spider-Man 249 goes over 300. Star Wars 71 goes over 300. Shadows of the Empire rising, currently 248. Uh, Thrawn 6, I think, is stable right now at 260. We'll probably continue to uh, heat up once we get more information about Ahsoka, if we get a Thrawn casting and official news there. Web of Spider-Man 32 and a 9.8, $523. And lastly, X-Men 166 and a 9.8, $243. So the potential, like the high end range of what this order could possibly bring back for you is uh, almost $2,400. Again, it's not going to happen. It's just kind of the, the range, so somewhere between $140, $150, and $2,400 is where this order is ultimately going to end up. Now, this is going to take a lot of time for me to go ahead and actually screen the books, decide which books maybe need a press, decide which ones are going to go to CGC, which ones aren't, 
and so on. So it, it, it takes a long time to kind of process this order to not only input it the way that I'm doing it, but also um, figure out how I'm going to uh, catalog uh, physically, screen, press, handle, process, grade, and maybe eventually sell or keep for the PC. But in the end, I feel like if these are all 9.8s, I've added, uh, you know, to, uh, potentially $2,400 of value into my collection uh, by, again, buying raw, finding places, buying the right books, finding value, uh, maybe finding some non-keys, things that people aren't talking about, things that have value. Um, and these are the kinds of things that I like to, to talk about and speculate and, and buy on. It's not necessarily the constant overhyping of characters and let me show you the same book over and over and over again and hope that you go out and increase the value for me. I want to show you what I'm buying and show you value because that's really what we're all after. Uh, if we're specking on a book and we're buying it for cheap, we want it to increase in value. Well, there's a lot of value in books that have existed on the market for decades. And it's just a matter of finding the right book and using the right data and the right resources and looking at recent sales data and so on and combining all of that and, and being smarter about what you're spending your money on. And instead of waiting two or three years down the road for some character to show up in a show, you can get value from these books right away by following my method. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks for watching. Happy collecting. And see you next time.